ratio division, as the name implies, is about dividing something in a particular ratio. And when we're talking about something in linear um, functions, it's an interval, okay? So here's an interval, AB. Now something that um, students often forget is that you actually already know a ratio division formula. It's just, it's for a very particular ratio that's very, very common, namely one to one, right? If you divide something in the ratio one to one, you're splitting something in half so that one piece is exactly the same as the other, right? That ratio division formula, one to one, more commonly known as the midpoint formula, right? Which looks like this. Okay, so when you are thinking about ratio division, you want to think about it as, okay, this is kind of like midpoint, but I want to be a little more finely controlled. I want to pick a particular value, not just one to one, but you're going to get something much the same. Like think about what's happening here, okay? For the x coordinate, you're taking both of the x coordinates that you start with, combining them in some way, and then you're dividing through, right? Because if you just add them, you're going to be somewhere far away, okay? But if you divide, you'll get an average. Now, if I wanted to divide by some other kind of ratio, I'm still going to combine the x values in some way, divide through them in some way, and the y values are exactly the same, okay? To, so to look at exactly how we do it, let's pick a point. Let's call it, uh, I'll label it up here actually. Let's call it p, right? Now, p for point, and I want to know what the coordinates of this thing are, right? This is what I'm trying to find out. So therefore, I'm going to call the coordinates at this point x, comma, y. They're the unknowns. Not to be confused with the x1, y1, and x2, y2 that are some numbers you'll be given. Okay. So if we're dividing this in a ratio, we need to know what the ratio is, right? Now by convention, we use the letters k and l. Please note, um, unlike in many other places here, um, in quantum geometry, order, as you can imagine, is drastically important. Order makes all the difference. If, for instance, this was one to two, one to two, it doesn't take much to see that if I did it in the ratio two to one, I'd be somewhere else, right? Because I'd be going the further distance and then the shorter distance. So one to two and two to one are not the same. K to L, that's an alphabetical order. And the points that are given to you, A and B, will also be given to you in the order that they want you to divide in, okay? So for example, here might be a question. Divide interval A, B in the ratio K to L, right? Now in this case, it means you're starting with A, going to B, and you're gonna do the K portion first, and then the L portion, just like I've shown on my diagram. Okay. So, how are we going to do this? Um, we're going to take advantage of similar triangles, and so we're going to draw some triangles on here. Uh, if I draw down a vertical line and a horizontal line, as if I were working out the gradient, and do the same thing here, I now have a pair of right angled triangles. Okay. Because these lines are perpendicular, we've got verticals and we've got horizontals. I also have some parallel lines, and I have a transversal, namely AB. So I've got corresponding angles equal and so on. So these two triangles are similar. That makes sense? And we don't need to prove that, we're just using that fact. Being that, triangle, now we need some more names here. I've got A, P, and B, but to be able to talk about the triangles, I'm gonna call this C and D over here. Triangles A, C, P, and triangle P, D, B are similar. If we wanted to prove it, the reason would be that they're equiangular. Okay. Now, I'm going to use this to take advantage of, well, I want to work out the x's, and then I want to work out the y's, okay? So what relationships do I see between the x's and the y's in this diagram, right? I can see that, for instance, this length here, PD, right? If I just wanted to work out what this horizontal length was, it's just on the x values, right? So how would I calculate it? Yeah, Vincent. X2, wait, the whole length. Yeah. Yeah, good. So x2 is how far I am away from the axis, right? And x is how far this is away from the axis. So this will be the difference. x2 minus x. That's PD. Using exactly the same logic, I can get AC, right? Which is starting from x and I'm taking away x1, 
Okay. So I have those two distances, so now I can compare, compare different sides to each other, right? And they're all ratios. So I can say corresponding sides and similar triangles are in the same ratio, right? So the corresponding sides might be, say, AC and PD. They're corresponding sides, aren't they? Okay, so I can say AC on PD, right? And the other pair of corresponding sides, the ones that I know something about, are the ones that I've been given ratios for, right? So they're going to be AP and PB, okay? And the reason why, corresponding sides in similar triangles. Okay, now conceptually, that's all there is to it, right? Just recognizing that similar triangles relationship and picking out the right sides. From here, let's just do our substitution. We've already noticed in green what AC and PD are. AC is going to be this, and PD is going to be that. By definition, these two, these hypotenuses, they're the sides that are in ratio. So I've got K first, and then L. And all I want to do here is I'm trying to find this thing. Right? Except I know it's something different. I want the x coordinate, so I just need to make x the subject. You see that? Okay, so let's just rearrange this, go through motions. It's not hard, right? You okay with that? Just divided, uh, sorry, I've just cross multiplied and expanded out. Okay. Here I'm going to make x the subject, which will give me k plus l. And then I'll divide through. Okay, now there are a couple of things to notice. Number one, I don't need to go through this whole process again for the y values. It will play out exactly the same, but with y's instead of x's. So I can just use this and say, similarly, my y coordinate will be ly1 plus ky2 on k plus l. That'll still be the same. Okay. Secondly, please note, and this is what is, is drastically confusing for Bill. Okay. Alphabetically, which one comes first? Which ratio, which part of the ratio comes first? Alphabetically, k comes first and then L, but in the formula, right? In the formula, they're mismatched, right? L comes first and then K. That's a bit weird. I mean, if you write it numerically, they, they switch over. The reason they switch over is because of what happens in here and the actual lengths of the sides involved. Okay, so it's not just random. It's like, why can't we just do it the other way? Well, if you do it the other way, you'll get the opposite ratio. Okay? And the easiest way to work out what's going on is just when you get an actual value for this, right? When you take this and you pop it into this formula, do for yourself, <laughs> are you sick of me saying this yet? Do for yourself a rough sketch and you will be able to tell in like three seconds whether the point you've got is like, oh, roughly this way, I've got it right, or it's gone that way, my ratio is backwards. I should have flipped these around, okay? So there's the formula, and you can see how it makes the midpoint formula, right? If your ratio is one to one, this becomes x1 plus x2, and this is one plus one, which is two, and the same thing for y, all right?